St. James the Apostle, July 25th, the Collect, let us pray. Grant, O merciful Father, that as thine holy apostle, St. James, leaving his father and all that he had, without delay was obedient unto the calling of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and followed him. So we, forsaking all worldly and carnal affections, may be ever more ready to follow thy holy commandments. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the epistle, the lesson is written in the 11th chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning with the 27th verse. In these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Here endeth the lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 20th verse. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, with her sons, worshiping him, and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Feast of St. James, which is red because he was a martyr, uh, is, as we heard from the reading in the book of Acts, uh, takes precedence today because it is a, a prayer book saint and a prayer book saint day. And so it takes precedence over the uh, eighth Sunday after Trinity. The um, gospel reading we have 
talks about a time, of course, when all the apostles were still sort of stumbling along and trying to learn. And certainly we see how different they were by the time, by the, time the book of Acts really gets rolling. And it's obvious why two major things. They had seen the gospel events of Christ having died and rising again. And of course, also in the second chapter of Acts, the day of Pentecost, and they're filled with the Spirit. So you see here is a, is a sharp contrast between what you see in the book of Acts, even at the day's reading, a sharp contrast between the martyrdom of St. James, in this case, James, the son of Zebedee, the brother of John, not the other St. James, the brother of the Lord, who would really effectively obviously be the the, first, the apostle who was also the first bishop of Jerusalem from everything we can see in the book of Acts and in history, who was also martyred in, his, in turn years later. But we see a major difference between James accepting martyrdom and dying and James here along with John having his mother go and asked to be either on Jesus' right hand or left in his kingdom. Uh, it makes me think of when St. Paul said, though we knew Christ after the flesh, henceforth know we him no more. After the flesh is what he means. When he, he didn't necessarily even mean Jesus specifically in terms of how Jewish people perceived of Christ or Messiah before Jesus actually came and did the things he did. They were expecting simply a king, a conqueror. They expected him in a great war to deliver them, not just from Roman bondage and oppression, but immediately to go to the resurrection of the dead and bring in the kingdom of God. And they did not understand that first he must be the suffering servant. I mean, just look at the shape of the Old Testament history. First, the Messiah is a word used for priests, the anointed, a Shia, priests who do what? Primarily offer the blood of atonement for sin. And then in the history of the Old Testament, the word Mashiach, Messiah, Christ, it's all, it all means the anointed, is used for the kings. And David is, is the father of the dynasty that lasts forever because Jesus is born in that house. And, and so the very word Messiah shows two comings. It, one, the first time, the suffering servant. And it was definitely the message of the cross that really was not getting through to them. It was definitely that message that he came to be a servant to everyone and give his life as a ransom for the many. It says many here, it's the many, it's the one and the many. And that we also see from the suffering servant passage, the 53rd chapter of Isaiah where he bore all of the sins of everybody else, of the many. And St. Paul drives that home in the fifth chapter of Romans, that by one man's obedience, the many were made righteous. Now, the big difference in James. Here we see ambition in the gospel, the younger James. James with his brother John, the ones Jesus called the sons of thunder. The ones who, when Jesus was not allowed into a Samaritan village, said, Lord, are you going to call down fire from heaven on them like Elijah did? And he said, you don't know what spirit you are of. The son of man has not come to destroy man's lives, but to save. There was so much for them to learn. Jesus told them several times, several times, throughout the Gospels, especially you see it in the synoptic Gospels. He tells them several times 
that he is going to go to Jerusalem. Well, when they first hear that, they're probably excited. Oh, boy, he's going to, he's going to, bring, he's going to bring the kingdom now. No, he's going to go to Jerusalem. But then he tells them he'll be rejected by the chief priests and the elders. They will basically, you know, he describes all the torture and mocking he went through. He said they will crucify him. They'll put the Son of Man to death. And the third day he'll rise from the dead. None of them wanted to hear that. St. Peter, even after being told that he's blessed because he had said Jesus to Jesus, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Then he goes and tells him immediately, he reminds him, he's going to go to Jerusalem and go to the cross. Well, they don't even hear the cross, so no wonder they haven't heard what follows. And the third day he shall rise again. Peter takes him and begins to rebuke him. Far be it from thee, Lord, this shall not happen to thee. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You're an offense unto me, for you savor not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. What is it that James and John want here? They want power. They want to go instantly to the glories of God's kingdom. Young men with ambition. Those of you who've heard this before, bear with me, but I know that some haven't. So I'll go ahead and tell the story. I remember years ago when I had an when my office was upstairs, up those steps, and that big heavy desk you see was up there, and we're not taking that thing back up. But at any rate, that big heavy desk was up there, and this man, came in and I knew what he wanted. He wanted to be a priest. He wanted me to help him and hoping Archbishop Haviland might ordain him and he could be an ACC priest. And But I had some doubts about him. And he was talking. I said, please tell me, what is it you want? He says, I want to be a priest. Well, so far, so good. Well, actually not, but I won't get into that. But so far, he said, what he said is fine. And he says to me then, in fact, I want to be a bishop. And I, he must have seen this look on my face, like, what is wrong with you? Because he says, isn't it right for someone to want to climb to the top of his chosen field? I said, you know what the word deacon means? Because even the archbishop, the archbishop himself, is a deacon for life, still a deacon. You know what deacon means, right? No, he didn't know what it means. He shook his head. So it means servant. I remember that for the last several decades, I have watched in Christian circles, especially American evangelical circles, that so many people are being encouraged to learn leadership, to be prepared to be leaders. Oh, this really appeals to young men, especially, but this appeals to people. Yeah, I'm gonna learn to be a leader. I'm gonna learn to be out there and be a leader for God. Well, the thing is, that's exactly what Jesus is condemning in this passage. And I've been condemning. He says, it shall not be be so among you. What is the nature of authority? I mean, he says here, whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. See, the King James language that we're using is beautiful. I love it. But when we say minister, we either think of somebody like me with this on or we think of somebody serving the prime minister in England who's the minister of this or that but it means servant so when he says let him be your minister it's let him be your servant son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister what in modern English that's the son of man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many what ultimate service it was to go to the cross and suffer all of that humiliation and pain and everything just to free us from sin. What a servant he was. And, and all the years leading up to that, he healed the sick 
Three times he brought back the dead because their fam they had died I, well prematurely and their, their job wasn't over yet. That's how I look at it. But he was a servant to everyone. And he was glad to do the will of his father. And when the time came for the cross, he embraced the cross. Not my will, but thine be done. To the Son of Man, you know, says, I, I could call on my Father, he would send legion of angels. He said, uh, I am the good shepherd, I give my life for the sheep. No man takes my life from me, I lay it down of my own accord. Guys, I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This is service. And the way to follow Jesus is the way of humility and servanthood. I said to that man, I want you to forget about holy orders altogether. I'm not gonna help you to become ordained. Not as a priest, not as a deacon. I said, no, I, I can't help you. And he got angry. And when I told him that the third time, because he didn't hear it the first time, he hung up on me. This time he was talking to me over the phone and I've never seen him since. But this isn't about ambition. And the example that I must set, even with the authority of the priesthood, is the example of a servant. Now look, all of you who've raised children have a much better understanding of authority than somebody who's been a celibate all his life or else just has had no children, even if he's a general in an army. You have a better understanding of the true nature of authority if you've raised children. Think of all the humble service you had to do for them while they were little. Because you had the authority, you had all the power. And that meant you changed the diapers, you prepared their food, you had to dress them, you had to teach them all these things, and you were a servant. Well, that's the nature of authority. And it can only be, I mean, within the church, it's more like that than a family. And it can only be exercised by people who have humility and love and want to follow the Jesus who went to the cross. But it's worth it because he endured the cross for the joy set before him. Let us take the lowest place. Let us be servants to one another and to all people in the name of Jesus. And let us look for that great reward to come when we see him face to face. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Be ascribed as is most justly do all might, majesty, dominion, power, and glory, henceforth world without end. Amen. Amen. Amen.